Okay. All right, so 10 5 um, refers to the area of regular polygons and circles. So <coughs> remember, regular polygons are polygons that have all equal sides and all interior and exterior angles are equal. So we don't have a formula, if you notice on your Ames reference sheet. There is no formula for area for a pentagon, a hexagon, septagon, octagon, decagon. But we have to have a way to find area of those things. And so, um, of course, somebody has figured out a way to find them. And so we're going to use what's called the apothem know what the word apothem means because if you were asked to find the apothem you need to know what that is. See so the apothem is a segment that is drawn from the center of a regular <coughs> polygon and you're assuming that that polygon is inscribed inside of a circle. So it's really drawn from the center of that circle um, perpendicular to a side of the polygon. So as you can see in this picture this right here this little piece from the center down to that side. So this happens to be a hexagon. I could draw six different apothems. You're only going to draw one, but I could draw six different ones. So there's not just one. And then you see on here, um, from the center to a vertex is called R. If this were inscribed in a circle, I had a circle all the way around here, wouldn't that vertex be on the circle? And what distance is from the center to the circle? Radius, so that's why it's called R. So we're going to use the radius of the circle that it would be inscribed in also to help us find the area of this polygon. Then another important thing is that the apothem bisects this side that it is perpendicular to and it bisects the central angle. So from this radius to the center to this radius, that whole distance, that whole angle there that's called your central angle, if you recall, you have an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. Um, it's called a central angle. So that apothem bisects both the side and that angle. And then um, you need to know what the area of a regular pentagon, or a pentagon, a regular polygon is. This is not on your Ames reference sheet. It's called one half capital P A. You need to memorize that because it's not on that Ames reference sheet. So write yourself a note. So, so far this is the third formula that you've had to memorize. It's not bad. And I put over here that capital P represents the perimeter of that polygon, and little a represents the length of the apothem. Then you're also going to have to deal with today <coughs> the area of a circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? It's either 2 pi r or pi r squared. What are the units of measure in area? Is it singular, squared, or cubed? Squared. So is it 2 pi r or pi r squared? Pi r squared. That is on your English reference sheet, so fortunately you don't have to know that. So let's go ahead and look at some examples um, and apply some of these theorems. So example one, find the area of a regular pentagon, and you're going to need a calculator uh, for some of these, especially because we might have to use trigonometry or special right triangles. So either one will come into play. So on this one, we're going to find the area of a regular pentagon whose perimeter is 60 centimeters. <coughs> so the one thing that they've given me is that my perimeter is 60 centimeters. So I'm going to put that over here. This would be my let statement right here. And I'm going to put my perimeter is 60 centimeters. That's all they've given me. So obviously, I need to find my apothem. I have this, but I need to find my apothem. So, first thing I have to do is find the length of a side. How can I do that? And how many sides are on a pentagon? Yeah. So we've got 60 centimeters divided by five sides. And how many does five? How many times does five go into 60? How many times? So that means that 12 centimeters, this side here is 12 centimeters from here to here. And so is every other side on here. And remember, what does this apothem here do? 
it bisects that side. So if that's 12 centimeters, then this is six here and this is six there. Doesn't this apothem create a right triangle with the central angle, the side of that pentagon, and the radius? Doesn't it create a right triangle here? I now have one side to my right triangle. I can actually find the central angle. <coughs> How many degrees are in a circle? 360. And couldn't I make, <coughs> there's one central angle, couldn't I make a second one, a third one, a fourth one, and wouldn't that be a fifth one? And if all five sides are equal, because it's a regular pentagon, remember that these would be chords of the circle. Don't they create congruent arcs? And if all those arcs add up to 360, how do I find, and then the measure of the arc is also the measure of the central angle, how do I find the measure of one central angle then? I have 360 degrees, five central angles, all equal. What are you gonna do? Yeah, so you're gonna take 360 degrees and you're gonna divide it by and I'm just going to call it five sides because that's typically how you're going to think about it. But truly, I have five central angles in there. So if five goes into 360, how many times? Five goes into 36, how many times? <coughs> Six, no, seven. So five goes into 36, seven times with one left over. Five goes into 10, how many times? Twice. So that central angle is 72 degrees. Now remember that this apothem bisects that central angle. So because of that, I want to then take that central angle and divide it by two. What do I get? How many degrees? 31. 36 degrees. So this right here, it's kind of small, we're gonna redraw it really big. This right there is 36 degrees. So I don't want my entire central angle. I only want half of it. I always will split that central angle in half. Now, is 36 degrees one of our special right triangle degrees? No. But I have one degree in my right triangle and one side length. Can't I use sine, cosine, or tangent to find my missing side length? And which side do I want? Do I want the radius or do I want the apothecary? I want the apothem because I'm trying to find, this is my blueprint, this tells me what I need. I have my perimeter, I need my apothem, so that's my ultimate goal. So, step three over here, we're gonna use tangent, and I'll show you why we're gonna use tangent in a minute. We're gonna redraw that triangle nice and big so that we can work with it. So I took this triangle right here, and I redrew it over here. So this is R, the radius. This is my apothem A. We already know that this is six centimeters, and we know that this is 36 degrees. This is the one side I have, and this is my degree of reference. Is the six centimeters opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? It's opposite, so this is opposite. And what's A? Adjacent. Now you are not always gonna use tangent. We're using tangent in this specific case. Nine times out of 10, you probably will use tangent, but sometimes, you might use sine. Sometimes you might use cosine. It depends upon what you're looking for. But more often you are gonna use tangent. So then I'm gonna set up that age old equation that we used in uh, chapter eight. So we've got tangent, because that's OA. <coughs> so tangent of 36 degrees is equal to what over what? Opposite over adjacent, so six centimeters. <coughs> over my A. Anytime you have your A in that ratio, you are to turn this into a proportion. So then I'm gonna cross, multiply, and solve. And having A in the denominator makes it more difficult only because you have more steps to take. So if I cross, multiply, and solve, I get A times the tangent of 36 degrees equals six centimeters. How do you solve? divide by the tangent of 36 degrees. So remember, if you don't have a scientific calculator at home, can't you use your rinky-dinky calculator and your uh, trig ratio sheet? 
So if I'm trying to find the tangent of 36 degrees, thank you, then I'm going to look down here on my sheet for 36 degrees and my tangent is 0.7265. Or I can use my scientific calculator. Make sure when you're using your scientific calculator that it's what? Remember? Check your mode, right? So go to your mode button, check your mode, and make sure that it's in degrees. If degrees is not highlighted, then you need to scroll down here with your cursor keys and go over there and highlight degrees and hit enter so that radian is no longer highlighted. <coughs> so then second quit to get out of there. So then to find A, I'm going to take my calculator, get rid of the glare. I'm going to take 6 and divide it by the tangent of 36 degrees. I get 8 point, we'll go out to two decimal places, 8.26. And then that's in centimeters. So now I have everything that I need to throw into that formula. So plug in what you know. My P, I haven't used in a long time in this problem, this is 60 centimeters. And then my apothem is 8.26 centimeters. Now I'm going to caution you, if your degree is a special right triangle, 30, 60, or 45, you cannot use your calculator because it's going to give you a decimal answer, and that's not as accurate as the radical answer. So be super careful. So then I'm going to calculate this, so 0.5 times 60 times 8.26. And I get 247.8 centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. So we just found the area of a pentagon. So they are a little bit more work. Finding the apothem is a pain in the butt. If they give you apothem, the apothem you should be jumping up for joy because that's the hard part. All right, so then uh, you're going to need your note spiral. I'm going to give you another problem to do. So remember that I gave you the formula for finding the area of an equilateral triangle. And I told you that um, later I would show you how it's derived. So we're going to find the area of an equilateral triangle without knowing that formula that I gave you, and then we'll talk about why the formula is what it is. All right, so example two, you're going to find the area of an equilateral triangle. with side lengths <coughs> of eight inches. Now knowing just that information, I could use the formula that I gave you before, but we're gonna assume that we don't know that formula. Because I haven't given you the height of the triangle, that technically is just the base. So I have not given you the height of the triangle and, and any other normal triangle, the area is one half base times height. So we're going to draw a picture of this triangle. And that would be the center of my triangle if it were inscribed in the circle, let's just say. How many central angles can be created from a triangle? Triangle, how many central angles? Three. Quadrilateral would be four. <coughs> Pentagon, five. Hexagon, six. So whatever the number of sides are, that's the number of central angles. So way one, there's two different ways that we could do this without knowing that formula that I gave you and then you'll appreciate the formula that I gave you even more. So way one, we're going to use um, 
area equals one half PA. So step one. Oh, and I told you on here that your side length was what, eight inches? And then all the sides are the same. So step one, you're gonna find the central angle. So my central angle, I would take the center of my polygon and I would draw a line to one of the vertices and another line to a second vertex. And these are your radii in the circle if it were inscribed in the circle. Then my apothem would come from that same center and it would be perpendicular to the side that is included in between those two vertices. So here's my apothem. So to find my central angle, how many degrees are in a circle? 360. How many sides are on my triangle? So I always take 360 and divide it by the number of sides that my figure has, my regular polygon has. And so 360 divided by three is what? 120 degrees. But that 120 degrees is from here all the way to here. Do I want that whole angle? No. So I only want half, so I'm going to divide that by two, as always, and I end up with 60 degrees. Is that an angle that you're familiar with? Yes. So that 60 degrees is right here. It's important that you put the 60 degrees where it properly belongs. And since this is a right triangle, what does this mean that this is then? 30. So that means that this is 30 degrees then. <coughs> So I found my central angle in order to find my apothem, and oh, by the way, if this whole side is eight inches and I created this apothem, what does that apothem do to this side? It bisects it. So this is four inches, and this is four inches. So now I know a degree and I know a side. The minute I see my 30, 60, 90, because I'm gonna find my apothem. So then step two is find the apothem. So I'm going to use my um, pattern of 30, 60, 90, 1, red 3, 2, create my fractions. The side that I know, the 4 inches, is across from the 60. So I'm putting the 4 inches below the radical 3. The side that I want to find is A, and that's across from 30 inches. So I'm putting A underneath the 1. And so this is the proportion that I want to solve. So if I cross multiply and solve, I have <coughs> A times radical 3 is equal to 4. And then to solve, I'm going to divide by rad 3. Paul, how can you see what I'm doing if your back's turned? Isn't that uncomfortable? I would think so. And then I need to make sure that I rationalize, right? So I've got rad 3 over rad 3. So my apothem's length is 4 rad 3 all over 3. So what else do I need to find? If I'm using 1 half PA, I found my apothem. Check off one. What else is in that? Perimeter. How hard is it to find my perimeter? So step three, find perimeter. What do you know about an equilateral triangle? All sides are equal. All sides are equal. And what's the side length of one side? <coughs> eight. So my perimeter is equal to three times eight inches, which is 24 inches. So now I can find my area. Step four, area equals one half PA. Substitute in for P and for A. So my um, perimeter we just found is 24 inches. My apothem we found earlier, and this is by the way inches over here. So four, radical three over three inches. So I'm gonna put my 24 over one 
so I can cancel whatever I might need. I, I want to hesitate putting this into my calculator <coughs> because you're going to put in radical 3 and come up with a decimal. I want the exact answer. So doesn't 3 divide into 24 8 times? And doesn't this 2 divide into the 8 4 times? So aren't I left with an area that's equal to, all I have left now is 4 times 4, which is 16, radical 3. And then this is inches times inches, so it's inches squared. Yes? How did I get what? Um, the one half here, that 2 canceled in that 8 4 times. Now let's just backtrack a little bit. The formula that I had given you <coughs> for equilateral triangle was what? Side squared times rad three all over four. So what's eight squared? 64. What's 64 divided by four? 16 times rad three. Did it give us the right answer? Do both of those get us to the right answer? Which one's easier? Do you appreciate the formula now? Yeah. And we got the formula by, oh, by the way, if I didn't know the side length of 8, what would I have let it be? S, right? And so here, instead of um, putting in 4 here, what would I have put? S. And so then I would have had an S here and an S here, right? Um, and then for my perimeter, I would have had three S's, right? So that's where your S squared would come in play. And wouldn't the three cancel with that three? And then our four would have come from, well, we have the half. Let's look at that. So I would have had, instead of the four, I would have had S radical three over three times, my perimeter would be three S, right? And then one half. Ping, 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 I miss something. Three times my side. Oh, wouldn't this, this wouldn't be side, this would be half side, wouldn't it? Because this isn't the side length, four, right? So wouldn't this be like one half of that side? Wouldn't I take that side and divide it by two? Because four is half of eight. Do you see where I'm coming from? So what's, the threes would cancel, and you have side times side, which is side squared times red three, all divided by two times two is four. There's your area formula for an equilateral triangle. Well, I personally would memorize that rather than have to go through all that work, right? Um, the other way would be um, we could have taken that equilateral triangle. So I'm just going to briefly go through way two. So these are ways that you can use if you forget this formula. So take that same triangle, right? We know the sides are eight. What happens if I take, isn't this the height of the triangle? And this is the whole thing is the base. So if I wanted to use one half base times height, which is your general formula for any triangle, don't I know that all three angles in this triangle are 60, 60, 60? And what happens when I uh, bring an altitude straight down perpendicular to the side on an equilateral triangle? <coughs> it bisects this angle, which makes this 30. And it bisects this side, which makes this four inches and four inches, because I told you it was eight. So don't I have the same situation going on here as I had here, right? Only I'm going to use my whole entire base and my whole height. So you could go through and um, use your 30, 60, 90 to find the length of this right here. Um, and run it through so that would give you your height and then you'd use your eight in your base. So you could still use that way. Um, just bear in mind that this does bisect both sides. Questions? All right, so what I'm gonna do is give you your practice sheet and we're gonna run through a couple more questions on the practice sheet. So this is part of your homework.
All right, so let's look at this. Pay attention to your directions today. Don't do more than what they're asking. So the first directions on here says, find the area of each regular polygon, round your answers to the nearest tenth. If you don't have enough room, there's an empty back, right? So here we have an octagon with an apothem. Yay, why am I all excited? Yeah, they gave you the apothem, and then, um, but did they give me the perimeter? No. The apothem is a harder one to find. So for this particular one, I want to start off with my general formula, A equals one-half <coughs> EA, because that tells me what I'm looking for. So I have my apothem. <coughs> what am I looking for? <coughs> perimeter. And so um, what do I need to know for perimeter? A side length. So they give me a side length of four centimeters, and how many sides does this figure have? Eight. eight. So my step one, my perimeter, is equal to eight times four centimeters. So my perimeter is 32 centimeters. Now I have all my pieces. So step two is to plug into the formula. So I know that, so I got my one half. My perimeter I just found is 32 centimeters. Please put your units of measure in your formula. And then my apothem is 4.8 centimeters. So that does imply I'm using my calculator. So 0 0.5 times 32 times 4.8. So I get 76.8 what? So when they give you the apothem, it's not so bad. You're just running it through a formula, right? So all of these, um, one through four, they give you the apothem, and you might have to find your perimeter, right? So I think you can do all those. Then let's look at these down here. This one, this is obviously an equilateral triangle, but what have they given you this time? They've given you the radius. So if I'm going to use my... Uh, side squared times radical three all over four formula, or if I'm going to use one half perimeter times apothem, I can't use radius, right? So let's think which one would be easiest. If I use the one half PA, I'd have to find the apothem and the perimeter, right? Which perimeter is not so hard to find, is it? Or I have to have this whole side length. It's half a dozen one way or another. They're both just as much of a pain to find. So here's what I would do. I would immediately drop down your apothem. There's your right angle. Bearing in mind that, remember you have this other radius right here that creates the whole central angle. So what's your first step? <coughs> what should be your first step? Should I find my central angle? So first step is central angle. <coughs> So uh, how many degrees in a circle? 360 divided by how many sides on a triangle? Three sides equals 120 degrees. Is that the figure I want? Do I want the whole central angle? I only want half. So divide that by two, and I actually get 60 degrees. Oh, that's fabulous because it's I don't have to use sine cosine tangent. I can use my trig. So this is 60 degrees right in here. I'm sure that's a little fuzzy to you, isn't it? And I can't make it any better. Ah, there we go. All right, so there's 60 degrees, and then that means that this is 30. And I really like to use the um, equilateral triangle formula, so I'm going for this X right here, and I'm going to call it X and not S because it's not really the whole side. You have to be careful because I really want this whole distance. Isn't this also X here? So oftentimes you'll see me putting them both in there. So step two, find that side length. So I've got 30, 60, 90, 1, red 3, 2. <coughs> <coughs> 
And then what's the only side that I know? Eight inches, right? Isn't that my radius? And it's across from what angle? The 90 degrees. So I'm going to put the eight inches across my 90 or underneath my two. So there's my eight inches. Don't I want x, which is across from 60? So I'm going to put an x underneath my radical three. Cross multiply and solve. I get 2x is equal to 8 rad 3. When I divide by 2, I get x is equal to 4 radical 3. So this is 4 rad 3, and this is 4 rad 3. Bless you. So what's the side length equal? What's this plus this? 4 rad 3 plus 4 rad 3 is 8 radical 3. So now I'm ready to use my formula. If I wanted to use the 1 half PA, I'd have to now find the apothem. And I'd have to take this and find the perimeter. I personally find that more work. So I'm going to use A equals side squared radical 3 all over 4. Which equals my side is 8 rad 3, and it's in inches. So 8 times 8 is what? 64 <coughs> times, what's rad 3 times rad 3? 3 inches squared times radical 3 all over 4. So does my 4 cancel into 64? 16 times. And all that's left is for me to multiply across. What's 16 times 3? 3? So 48, radical 3. Oops, it's not over anything, so it's inches squared. <coughs> My denominator canceled out. So then let's look at, we did a pentagon first example, right? So let's look at this one, number seven. That's the last one we'll do. So this one's a pentagon. I have no choice but to use one half PA. So that's telling me what pieces of this I need to find. What have they given you in the figure? What says 25 centimeters? It's the radius. So I'm going to immediately draw another radius, and I'm immediately drawing down this apothem right here. There's my A, my apothem. And I'm going to end up drawing this triangle bigger so I can see what's going on. But I need to find that central angle first. Always my first goal, central angle. Where do I start with? 360. Divided by how many sides? Six sides equals 60 degrees. Is that the angle I want? No, don't get excited because it's a special angle. We still have to take half, right? And so I end up with 30 degrees. There's my central angle. So I'm going to redraw this triangle nice and big. And I'm going to put that 30 degrees right here where it belongs. And I'm going to also label what they've given me, that 25 centimeters goes right here. And then um, I know that this is 60. So I need to find my apothem, which is here. This is my apothem. And I'm also going to have to know this side over here, because I'm going to need to know that for my perimeter. So I'm going to call this x. And bear in mind that this is x and this is x. So I'm going to have to double that x in order to find the whole side line. So let's use our 30, 60, 90. 1, radical 3, 2. I know across from my 30 is x. So below 1 is x. Across from my 60 is a. So there's a. 
and across from my 90 is 25 centimeters. So below the 2 is 25. You need to choose which of the variables you're going to solve first. So I'm going to solve my apothem first. So I'm solving that per, uh, proportion first, right? So cross multiply, I get 2a is equal to 25 radical 3 divide by 2. My apothem is equal to 25 radical 3 over 2, and that's in centimeters. So that's one piece that I need. Now I'm after my perimeter. So perimeter. How many sides? Six sides. So I've got my X. Um, I have to go ahead and find that first though. So I'm going to ignore the middle and I'm going to use 1 over x equals 2 over 25. So if I cross multiply, I get 2x is equal to 25 and divide by 2, <coughs> x is equal to 25 halves, but that's only half of it, right? Don't I want two of those? I mean, technically you could have looked at said, oh, I really want 2x. Isn't 2x really 25? So you could have stopped there. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 2 to get what 2x is. So 2x is 25. All right, so then, oops. So then I want to find my perimeter. So perimeter is equal to 6 sides times 25 centimeters. <coughs> What's 6 times 25? What? 150 centimeters. So this is my other piece. So my fourth step, I can throw that in my formula, one half PA. So I have one half times my perimeter of 150 and my apothem, which is 25 radical three over two centimeters. Immediately, I'm putting the 150 over 1. Can the 2 cancel into the 150? Yeah. So, and because of this radical, I want to leave it in radical form. So the 2 cancels in the 2 once and into 150 75 times. Will this 2 be able to cancel into the 75 or the 25? No. So, <coughs> Go ahead and multiply your 75 times 25. Go ahead and scroll back out. So 75 times 25 is equal to 1875. So we have 1875 radical 3 all over 2 centimeter squared. That's our final, final area. That's your answer. Now, your textbook might actually take that um, 1875 and it might divide it by 2 and it might put a decimal in front of the radical. I caution that only because that's a terminating decimal, so that's okay. It's still accurate, but if for some reason you end up with a repeating decimal and you have to round it, now you're no longer accurate. So be careful doing that. All right, any other questions? Okay.